talking about needing to put signs up for flashing lights um, that our director of schools talked about. And it, it bothered me because enforcing the speed limit will pack ways currently a private road, like as if that's a safety concern, which it is, but it's all of a sudden on the radar of our school director. It bothers me because we brought this up at our first meeting of this committee two school years ago. We're, we're at the end of our second school year when this came up. We didn't meet in September. We met in October and it was the first item on our agenda because parents were concerned about not having school zones out there. So we talked about it. We beat it to death, went back and forth to several different committees on it. I think Health and Emergency Services talked about it. Education Committee talked about it. We talked to our Highway Department Director about it. It kept bouncing around about whose responsibility. But one thing we all knew for sure was, as a county, we couldn't do anything with it because it was not a county road. The school board was the only ones that could have done something about it. And to think that that wasn't considered in their budget when that school was being planned five, six years ago, five years ago? How long has it been since that school was designed and started construction? It was, I think, late 2018 or early 2019. Five years ago? Okay. So um, the, the very last thing we let it go in this committee was because our highway director, superintendent, said that he could talk to them and he felt pretty confident that he could get them to put those signs up. Still hasn't been done. Why is it an issue now of safety when it wasn't this whole time? It's either a safety issue or it's not a safety issue. Well, and to speak to that uh, about the signs, I believe I'm correct. That, um, I, I, I spoke to several different schools and it, it winds up the schools are the ones responsible for doing the, uh, the flashing lights or the or, correct. Toby. Yeah. And, uh, and so, because we went through the whole thing, because Mary Isabel even called uh, Sheriff Weatherford and right. spoke with him, you know, and we went through all of it, you know, went through the whole... We got, the, we got extra personnel to go out and yeah. do the traffic control in the morning. And for a moment, that there was somebody out there, and then I found out it was, we found out it was the SRO from the school, which was... Taking them on their Zoom. Yeah, so there's a lot. And, but uh, I, I will say, I know that the contractor, when they finished up, um, upper station there was um, some some speculation or talk about using the lights that was for that road for wolf pack and then i know that they ordered it and used in the process i don't know if y'all know this but i mean when you order stuff it it's not like it used to be it takes a long time to get them in so the ordering process when they ordered it it, just, it took a lengthy amount of time for them to get them in are they on the way Yes, sir. That's what, I, that's what I know. That's exciting. That, yeah. Because that, I will say, to speak to it, I've had so I've many, been told there on the way. I've had a been number been. of citizens, not on the Upper Station Camp Creek Road, not that side. Right. I haven't really had really hardly anyone reach out to that. But on the Hunter's Lane side, it's just been a lot of folks that have been very upset about it um, that live in that, that trail neighborhood back in there. And so that's not necessarily Hunter's Lane, but then all those things back in there. But so just, just, is there anything else we need to discuss on that? I just, I do want to, I am glad we brought it up because I keep getting asked about it. And so it's nice to have an update about that. Well, the comment specifically was made enforcing the speed limit on Wolf Back Way, which is currently a private road. Our, this is maybe a question for Mr. Ellis, but I'll direct my question to the chair. And, and if you know, um, it, if, so any law that's broken, broken within that property, cannot be enforced because it's not adopted as county yet. I believe that's correct. And that's no, just, no. So uh, the SROs are there in vain? What's, well, I believe that can't be right. I believe traffic laws. Am I, am I correct? Only traffic laws. I'm going I'm to ask, I'm gonna ask folks that are smarter than I am about that. So. Well, I think if there's something dangerous going on, traffic laws can. You know, if they're doing something, the doing sheriff, donuts out there. In the yeah, street. the sheriff can go out and stop them and, and correct. So likewise, if they're doing 50 miles an hour in a 15 mile an hour zone, they yeah. can stop them. So this yeah. is not an accurate statement that what they're I, saying on here that that the director of schools is saying that 
us not approving, or the planning commission not approving that plat prevents them from enforcing speed limits on Wolfpack Way, which they have not put signage up for two years. I know that uh, as far as the jurisdiction over the road, I have no jurisdiction over it. Well, I'm not I, I would say, yeah, I know, but I'm, I'm sitting there, I'm, I'm just saying generally, you know, if a deputy sheriff pulls up and you're doing something silly, yeah, you know, I, I'm sure he can take care of the issue. So as far as do I know the law and if it's binding or not, I do not know that. I did. I will say uh, one more thing to that point. I understand, uh, Jeff. There, there were some complaints, uh, and I'm sure that Toby's probably heard them too, and Mayor's probably heard them too. But there were some folks that originally, I don't know if they still are, but they were drag racing on that road uh, at, at night. I think. I, I think. I assume. But uh, that's something that was going on out there, and I, I believe that I believe there were some deputies that were kind of trying to set up to stop that to wait there. Well, so, so that point, they, they do have jurisdiction on that road. The people are doing things it's that are endangering, the endangering kids. It's they have the ability to enforce that. That's not an accurate statement. I just want to point that out. But it, it, it reminded me that we left this in this committee, and our superintendent said he would get that thing here between he and the director of school, that he could get them to do that. So I'm glad to hear that they're coming. But it, it's ridiculous that it's been this long, and I know the supply chain is slow, but it is not two years slow. And, it, and, it, and when they knew the supply chain was slow back in 2020, when COVID first hit, or 2021, they should have been ordered back then. We still wouldn't be facing this problem. So I want the citizens to know that this committee has done their job when it came across to put it to the committee that should have done it, and all responsibility lies with the school board. That's a good point. And we... And we have no authority to make them do it. Right. Upon you know, right. We went through that at Austin. But absolutely, but that, that's a very good point. So that's duly noted. Uh, is there anything else on this that we need to speak on? Will this road be accepted at some point in time or once the plot is accepted? Once it's recorded, recorded by the planning commission? Is that yeah, I don't see why it wouldn't. I mean, I think it would be the normal protocol, wouldn't it, just for it to go through and be how far they would they be away from acceptance? As soon as the plat is accepted, it probably would be I did have one caveat, one question. Um, is that road between TW Hunter and, and Beach? You know where I mean over there, like if you're going from Warsaw's over to the Fire Hall area. Is that the kind of road? Or is it just is no, it on about Ward Line? Uh, no, not Ward. Ward's right there for Ward. Right the road that's going into the it's really parking lot. I just want to make sure, because I, I was thinking about that when we were talking about this a few months ago, and I didn't bring it up. And that, I don't well, think it is. When I went to school, there was a parking lot. This has been improved a lot to where it actually looks like a road. This is a true stoplight out here, pass through lane. Okay, that's just making sure. So that would be Yeah, so any other, any other questions on that, guys? Any other statements? I will do some checking. I know they, they ordered them months ago. So I'm thinking they'll be in pretty soon, hopefully. Can we report? When you find out on that, would you mind just reporting back and putting it on the agenda? And then would you also, because I know there's been citizens asking where that where those lights will go. It's really important to them. And so therefore it should be very important to us to find out. Thank you, Mr. So uh, since there's no action to take on this, I'll just go on the, the next um, agenda item. But we're keeping it on there, right? Yeah, we, we can keep it on there in old business. Would you mind, Christy, could you just put it on there in old business? And when it comes up and it's appropriate, we'll do it. Okay, so before the superintendent, Rose Superintendent. Okay. Um, wanted to, on exhibit one, show y'all where um, I wanted to transfer some funds. If you remember back um, months ago, I brought in to this, this uh, committee a contract and got with uh, the county attorney. We did a contract with the city of Westmoreland and finished. We were doing some roads up in that area that we were paving the county roads, and we therein was the city. Well, they, they paid us for that. And what I'm trying to do is just roll that back over in asphalt uh, to finish out the year with. And we had a uh, in October. We got paid some insurance money on a tracker that burned up, and sadly so. But we're 
we're wanting to use that money as well um, to roll over into asphalt, and we're gonna. It's gonna help us finish out the year. Okay. Um, uh, I guess there's, there's no vote, so um, no, this is good. I was gonna say it is okay. To, I guess make a motion for discussion. I'll make a motion. Thank you. Uh, all in favor, say aye. Uh, uh, all opposed. Um, which tractor was this that burned up a new one or an old one? Well, it was, it was not a real old one, but it was, um, it was the one that we had had for several years. But it, if you remember, I sent out emails to all of y'all letting you know what happened. We had, invest, we had our own investigation about it, and uh, I even reached out to the um, Summer County Sheriff's Department and their fire inspector come and do an inspection on it as well, trying to figure out exactly what happened. And uh, my chief mechanic, um, he turned it. He, you know, he felt like it was a it was a leak, and there was a spark. And when the fire inspector inspector comes, he said, "People don't understand." He says, "When you have these electrical sparks and it gets ignited with some kind of fluid that's ignitable, he said the spark is 2,500 degrees." And he said, it doesn't take much. And I'll, I'll be glad to send y'all pictures. It, no, it was amazing. Just about everything on it, the plastic, the plexiglass, all of that is petroleum products. When it gets hot enough to burn, it really, it really ignites. I remember, I remember so when I had a point. And so we stop, we stop three or four times a day and blow out the debris, the grass, the dry grass that blows back on. And so, we, we keep up with that, we take that very seriously, and the very next day we shut all operations down and pulled every tractor in and just took, we actually took the cats off of them and looked up butter, all of them to make sure, because we do that in the winter time, we did it again then just to make sure and go over each tractor. It took us a week to check for any leaks that we might have. Now, one of my questions, Mr. Chairman, was, I, I assumed that that insurance money would be used to buy another tractor. Well, and to roll into something else makes me pause because there was a a plea and a case, very good case made for why we needed three new tractors. Well, we still haven't place. got three. We're still waiting, but we feel like in this uh, next month we'll get the three in. I'm selling uh, three dump trucks that uh, when Judy was still in office, it took. Uh, a year and a few months to get the dump trucks in that she had ordered. And so, so many tractors do you have now? I've got uh, eight right now. So you would have had nine if this one didn't burn up? That's right. And the argument was made that you needed? Twelve. I need twelve. That's right, but now you're only going to have eleven because of this. But when I sell the dump trucks, I'm going to have the money to get a good use to them. That's what I was planning on. You would buy a used tractor? Buy a good used one. I don't know that um, I can come up with enough to buy very good. The whole argument for buying the three new tractors was to go with the roll off plan after a few years. We budgeted out a replacement of so many tractors. To buy a used tractor just kind of throws a wrench into that whole argument, so it makes me question the whole plan. But if I can buy you, and I will. But it's. Uh, <laughs> We're just looking at where we're at right now. Does anybody else have an issue with the way this is working? We're I, burning up tractors, but replacing money with some other uh, department in different sections. Well, a, a new tractor is like $140,000, if I remember from right. 15 months ago. And how much is a used tractor? Yeah. Well, oh, I don't know. How much yeah, is a used tractor? This is low hours, but what I was looking at is this was a really good used tractor. This I, is a tractor that I would not have replaced. And if I could find one comparable that's a little newer than it, uh, maybe I can. The tractors we talked about were um, 2012. Just, they were they were really up mm -hmm. and. And, and this one wasn't. And so what I'm saying is, if I can give a new one, 
I've got a little money left in my capital projects, and then with the sale of the dump trucks, it'll be close. I might be able to get the inventory. Yeah, and just, just to answer your question on that, Shannon, uh, I mean, insurance should be smarter than I am about track replacement, and it's saying that $43,825 would be where it would be to replace that one. Yeah. And, and that was a, a somewhat, okay, so I think if he's in the $50,000 range, it might be. But my point is we're not using the insurance money to buy a new tractor. I know. I know. I, that's a very good point. And so I guess just to, just to, just to move it along. Well, what I'm point, saying is the dump trucks are going to replace this money and add to, add more to it. I need, right now I need MIGs. I need to be putting down MIGs. And so during this time while I'm checking the tractors, it, this is something that's going to happen, but this is going to add money to uh, my hobby side of that. Help me. So, I mean, I guess the way that the best way to ask it is, and I think I understand this way, is do you feel like this is the best way to spend the money, um, you know, and, and manage the, the income of, or the, the so. money that you have in your account? It's going to give me immediate work down. It's going to be putting mix on the ground and repairs done that I got to do right now. Because I think at that point, uh, we got to we, uh, we got to we got to ask questions about it. But then I think that there's a certain point where that I've just got to trust that you got the best interest in it. You, know, right. you, you understand what I'm saying? So I, uh, all I, I'm saying is is, is the truck values are going to replace this and more and give me more money. Oh, well, there's a dump truck. Like the dump trucks are um, they're 95 miles. Uh, I could I'll send you. You don't have to send me. I'll try to. I just wondered. I didn't know. Are you not going to need to replace those dump trucks? They're already been replaced. Okay, that that that's going to be good. Does that help? I do have a quick question because it just occurred to me. Okay. Did you fill out your stuff on the old card? Yeah. Okay. Well, I did. Oh, okay. I got twenty five hundred dollars. Okay. Good. I come in. I just didn't understand why we still had it. It was a card that they bought years ago, and it was just sitting. I just wondered. It was last year. It was the mayor's personal view. It was Scott <laughs> Parker's. He had bought it several, several years ago. Mr. Turner, I just wanted to argue all that out to understand it. I understand some of you got juggled buckets of money, but for the citizens that just heard, we forked over a lot of money to buy tractors and then to hear this. I want it all understood. I want to understand it myself. That makes sense. Well, and we're it's our job to pass those things out. And we are getting training tractors, tractors, which is a wonderful thing. It's a great thing. And I think, too, and I'm not putting words in your mouth, but you're kind of, you're, this was, I hate to use the word emergency, but it's you're coming up with an emergency. So it's a difference of planning ahead, which I think you did with the three, three new tractors, versus responding to an urgent need. So you're recognizing, again, if I'm wrong, please tell me, but you're responding to a piece of equipment that basically broke right. unexpectedly. Right. So your solution to do something is to sell some capital to buy something to eat just to get you through with my money. Right. And so right now you're just wanting to put it back into the uh, mix, which I think a lot of people are going to like. So, I think well, everybody's going to like it. As, as long as we have enough tractors to put down the hot mix that we buy, I think if that's the number one question I would give them to. I think the main thing is not tractor for hot mix, just for but you, you know what I'm saying, though. Like, you know, that's, yeah. that's all that they're going to be asking is, do we have enough vehicles right. to put down the, the, the supplies that we have? Uh, are there any other questions on that? I, I think that's nice an item. It's a great point that you said that. And I believe, I believe we had to vote on this to pass it on the budget. Am I correct? Okay, so um, I'll make the motion. I'll second it. Happy passage. Thank you.
and then you know when talking with David I'm sitting here looking at it we you know we're already in the budget cycle and so let next year take care of next year through the budget cycle and try to uh, work with that and that's what I was trying to do here tonight is um, talk to y'all about that and make sure that um, you know I can talk to budget about it tonight as well what I did is I did I did do a little study just I did call uh, superintendent um, with uh, Wilson Williamson uh, and Montgomery and the reason I based uh, that study is, you know, they're all comparable in miles. Uh, Wilson has 860, I have 800, Williamson has 780, and Montgomery has 740. And then if you look at the populations, they're pretty comparable, Wilson being the smallest one. And then if you look at the, the, the value of the homes that are being sold, different things on the market study, these are three counties that kind of make sense with Suffolk County as far as where we're at as a whole. And so I talked to the superintendents and they sent me um, some information on their pay scales. And of course, this does not show what the private sector does to this, but this is just what where we're at as far as municipalities in our area that is comparable to Summer County. And so I just kind of put that together to show y'all some of the differences that are out and we're, we're behind as far as where our pay scale is and hopefully through our budget cycle I can take steps over the next year or two and get that corrected. Does anyone want to make a motion for discussion on this? Motion. Second. Okay, all in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, I'm going to start with that. Uh, I, I, I like you for this again. Do do I, I think the one thing that we got to really be careful about is I mean, you make great points about the size of the, of the county or the, the amount of miles on the roads, uh, the amount of price of the houses, because we're all in Middleton City, no public company. And, and the size of the departments, too. The size of the departments, great points. But the number one thing that the taxpayers are going to ask me if I don't ask is, you know, what, what are the tax revenues? I hate using the word revenues because it's literally been stripped from citizens, but what's the money that's being generated by taxes? Uh, what's the amount of the overall debt that is owed by that county and um, you know things like that of that nature that that really that's the most important thing and so right now we're in debt in Sumner County Williamson County is way more in debt than us and so I don't know if we want to be on a degree of how much in debt but that, that's the that's one of the things that's hindering us is our debt because when we are in debt, that means that the citizens' money that's being that's being taken from them and taxing, uh, you know, every time we tax them. And I know you guys know this, but it, it means that they're already working at a deficit because we're in debt. So they're having to service old money from from things that they might have just moved here for, and they're not even getting to experience the benefit of what happened with that tax money. So um, anyway, that, those are the things that are really important to me about making sure that we're very careful. I think you've done a great job on on the uh, idea of the bonuses that you spoke with, with David Long. And if you don't mind me speaking that, I, I called David and talked to him uh, for a while. He's so good about helping, about this kind of thing, about helping me understand what's going on. And basically, um, I spoke, I want to make an, a, an apology. Uh, I spoke at a, the previ a previous commission, and I said that it raised our maintenance of effort because I couldn't understand why it wouldn't. And I still think that might have, if that had been, if that had been truly a pay raise, because you'd have to replace that next year, I might be wrong on that, and I'm sorry if I am. But I don't see how this could raise it because I talked to him. This is this is actually a bonus. So if if I was wrong, I apologize. If I wasn't, I'm glad I said it. But but I just want to make sure that we're really careful to know that, as far as we can tell, it doesn't look like it's going to do anything because. Uh, According to David, you've taken in quite a bit more right. money this year than what we thought. Uh, right. Can you speak to that just uh, real quick? Yeah, we've got extra monies in the fund balance that uh, uh, going into the last quarter of the year. And the last quarter of the year is vacation time where you get a lot of extra travel. Fuel tax will probably be a little higher than what's going on. So we feel like this is something that will probably work into our favor. Uh, I think we're we're a plus 135,000 uh, some odd dollars right now, uh, and we feel like that'll go up. Um, and uh, and your 
total amount you're asking for the bonuses? We're, we're asking for 150. But, so, it, but it's something we feel like that this is going to go up and cover it. That's what he, that's what he felt too when I talked yeah. to him. So I just want, that is all exactly what we spoke about. Right. Um, so if this, if anybody has any more questions, then I want it to continue on out. But I want to say that I, I believe that we should take this page right here. Now, knowing that it is not full of the things, the, the two main things we need to notice how much money is coming in from taxes and how much debt there is. Those are two huge ones. Um, and I, the other ones are important, but I want to. I want to. Uh, I, wanna well, have I, that. I will tell you, and this is important to me, is I manage the biggest asset in the county. <clears throat> it's 800 miles of roadway, and the thing that I can promise you, it's just like last year. If I do exactly the same amount of time this year as I did last year, it's over a 670 thousand dollar increase. So what happens is, is that bet the cheapest thing to do is to give me enough money to operate and do as much work as I possibly can to repair and repay some of these roads and get them up to snow. Right now, we're, your, we're the eighth largest county in the state. We've probably got some of the worst roads of anywhere. And the safety of your kids and mine is, is number one. And now I don't know what our debt is, but I do know that I've been told we're triple A bonded, so we're probably in pretty, pretty good shape as a county as a whole. They don't usually give that out. But I will say this is that I really want to do as much work as I can to get us doing, getting our roads where they need to be. And the retention of my employees is the key to that. You just don't go out and get people every day like we've got. And, you know, when you've lost nine people since the beginning of the year, it's it's a scary thing because they're they're great guys. They're very, very handy. That's the reason people want them. That's the reason people want to hire them. See, I, I agree wholeheartedly on that. But I think there's one thing that's more important, and I think that we've neglected it for years in, in our county and all of them that was in is I believe that as, as we continue to you know, we, we can't afford, uh, to, you know, to have the roads paved correctly or the or the schools or the, all the different things that, you know, law enforcement. There's all these things that are amazing a assets to our community that the citizens are missing out on because we, we, we've been off the balance. And so, therefore, like, it gets to a point where the, if, if you tax citizens too much, you lose your number one asset. That's the citizens who live here. And I think that you've got to be careful because... The time to raise taxes is whenever that there's, there's you know that everything is is uh, being spent efficiently and there's no wasteful excess of this mess and that's a hard place to get to but that's a reality that we got to look at because if I don't want to lose how employees sure but it's very important to me that we don't lose citizens. Where is our tax rate at in comparison to everybody else in Middle Tennessee? I think that's what he's asking for you to provide. Yeah, with I, I'd like to see it. I'd like to see it because I think we're. We're about the cheapest county in Middle Tennessee. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and so I mean, we, we but, like it that way. But I, 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 I well, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Yeah, but I'm, I'm, to, to your point, I, I would like to move to push this on to budget if we can ask that the comparison of tax rates be added to this list, so that they have something to look at when they when they um, uh, vote on this for budget. Okay. Our, 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 our job is to, to you know, say the need, the need is there, and then their job is to figure out if we can afford it or not. Yeah, so. I, I want to say one thing. Can I make a remark, though, on, on yours, and if that's what you want to do, it's great. I believe we should pass them on separately. And the reason why I think that, I think that the bonuses should be a separate item. That is, because I'm for the bonus in concept. Separate from one. Uh, the, the bonus idea and then this study. And the reason, I'll just tell you what I'm thinking. And, and if, if, you, if I'm wrong, you need to go ahead and keep the motion. But um, I believe that the bonuses should be separate in the fact that it's not going to change the maintenance of effort. That's right. So I think that I think that we keep the hot water away from that because this right here, I believe, will be very revealing. But I think also the pay rate is revealing too. So I mean, it's a negative. You know, it's like, we're, we're pretty low, and I don't, I mean, I, I think that's a whole different argument. So what I would like to see is, I'd like to see that passed on to be carried through whenever the, the budget review 
is I'd like to do a little preparation knowing what's coming. And that's a whole different uh, conversation, but I think that, that should be, if you guys would think about uh, passing on a positive recommendation of, in it, um, I, like, I'm, I support the idea, the concept, as long as the budget will take time to investigate and make sure there's nothing that I'm not seeing. I withdraw on most of all the version seven. Is that okay with the agree. Okay, so uh, so anybody want to make a motion to that effect, if, if that's okay? I mean, if we, that's what you to Are we doing this individual right now? Um, which one are we doing? Most yeah. of them, which I, one? I believe that, uh, that we could do um, we could do a motion. Well, well it's a motion Mr. for Mr. Chairman. I make a motion that we pass item A two on the budget for further review. Yes, and then they can do an ad hoc committee or review it or whatever they want to do with it. We determine there's a need. They take it from there. Absolutely. I'll second that. I like that. And all in favor? Uh, Aye. Okay. And Mr. then, Chairman, uh, I make a motion that we pass item three on to the budget committee for further review. Yes, sir. And uh, would you would you like to say with the with the positive recommendation as long as it matches? Um, all in favor? Say aye. Uh, uh, I guess, uh, oh, did we get a second? Well, I'll second. The, uh, are we going to ask that these tax rates be included on this? Uh, I, I, think think two separate, to budget? I think they're two separate things. I think I think budget can decide if they want to add on. I'm just trying to save them time to get it speeded along. But they can ask what well, David has. has all that information. Yeah, he probably has all that information. He's got that information. Okay. So I'll if get with him. If you could fill it in right then and there, that'd be great. Yeah, so uh, uh, all in favor, say aye. Uh, aye. Uh, all opposed? Okay. Um, uh, Tanya Mayor, do you have anything? No report, Mr. Chairman. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut off. Uh, did you have anything else uh, coming? No, oh, I'm good. I'm so sorry, I, I did that. So right. Forgive me for getting out of order. Uh, okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. And um, there's no commission business, as far as I can tell. Motion so to adjourn. Second. Second.